Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab. If you're new, I'm Jodi. Welcome, I'm so happy you joined me today. If you do enjoy makeup and beauty related content, I do upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Central, and I do hope you will subscribe and join my makeup family. Today's video is really about the Pat McGrath Mothership 3 Subversive Eye Palette, but I do want to compare it to the Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes as well because this is one question that I'm getting very frequently since my swatch video on this palette. So if you're interested in seeing my opinions and also how I created this look using the Subversive palette, then just keep on watching. First thing I wanted to mention is I do have a complete unboxing and swatch video on this palette. It came inside this box, which is sort of an envelope sort of situation. It's a beautiful, beautiful box actually. And it had this insert with the shade names. So this is what the palette looks like. The palette does retail for $125, which is quite expensive for a 10 shade palette. And here are the shades. I do have a complete swatch video where I do finger and brush swatches. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave it linked up in the cards. These are the 10 shades that I have in my palette. I chose this one out of the three because I thought that it was the most unique. The Mothership One palette, which I believe is called Subliminal. That one has more cool tone looks and a pop of blue. So so if you like cool tone shadows, maybe that one is more up your alley. And then the second Mothership palette is called Sublime. And I will admit I have since ordered that palette since I purchased this one. And that one I would say is a more everyday palette. It has more neutral tones as well as a pop of green. And then this one here is um, neutral tones, but it also has a pop of purple. This one is sort of a blue violet shifty shadow. So it looks a little bit blue on camera right now, but depending on which way I look at it, sometimes it has a little bit more of a purple. My favorite shade from the palette is this Gigabyte shade right here. I think it's a beautiful greenish gold, like an antique gold color, and it is what I'm wearing on my lids today. And I've created multiple looks with this palette and I've really enjoyed them. I think it's a beautiful palette. Do I think it's worth $125? Well, to be honest, that's quite a hefty price tag for only 10 shades. I'm a makeup collector, I'm a makeup lover, so to me it does have a place in my collection and I do not regret spending that money on the palette, but I have to say that this is not a palette for everyone. If you don't think that you're going to really be using this palette often, then I don't think it's going to be worth your money. Now before I get into the demo, I did want to mention how I felt about this palette in comparison to a Natasha Denona palette. I have reviewed the Sunset palette on my channel as well, and I'm just using it as demonstration purpose. I also own the Lila palette as well as the Star palette. The first thing I wanted to mention about Natasha Denona is that you're getting a lot more shades and this palette is a lot more wearable. The same could be said for the Lila palette because you have more transition shades, deepening shades, crease shades, as well as your pops of colors and a variety of finishes. If you compare that to the Pat McGrath palette, it's a little bit more challenging to get a complete look using just this palette. I did do that for my look today because I wanted to demo the palette as it is without bringing any additional shades, but I have found that every time I use it, I do want to pull from my other eyeshadow collection to complete my look, especially when it comes to a transition shade. Now the shades that are in here are amazing. This black, for instance, is definitely the blackest black in my entire eyeshadow collection. I don't have anything like this shade. It is so, so, so black. It's just intensely pigmented. It's beautiful. This brown is the only other matte shade in the palette and it's very nice for the outer V. I used it in my crease today, which I will demonstrate in just a second. And it blends very nicely, but it is a deeper shade. So it's not something that I would traditionally begin with on my crease if you know what I mean so you're definitely gonna want to pull in from your existing collection to complete a look with this palette but if you have any neutral eyeshadow palette that will definitely complete the palette and you can get some beautiful looks it has a beautiful beveled mirror as you can see which is displaying the entire mess I have on my table here so sorry about that as far as describing the look that I'm wearing I primed my eyes using the Too Faced Shadow Insurance and I set it with a translucent powder before I begin. I had done my entire face makeup already so that you could see how the shades apply and I used all of the shadows dry so that you can also see the color intensity without wetting my brush. When I started my look, I did go into 
the shade deep shade which is that brown tone and I use that all in my crease using a very tiny blending brush and just the smallest smallest amount of pressure because I didn't want the shade to be too too intense I also worked that into my outer corner of my lid to smoke out whatever I was gonna put down on my lid at that point I went in with a black shade and a pencil brush and I applied it to the outer corner in a V shape and then I blended it out using the original brush that I used for the shade Deep Shade. At that point I applied the shade Night Creature on the center of my lid and working the way outward. If you notice I used the Makeup Forever brush and that brush was dry so you can see how the shadow applies. And then after that I went into the shade Gigabyte and I applied that to the inner third of my eyelid. I started with a brush and then I also used my fingertips so that you could see the color payoff that you could get with a brush versus your finger. I did line my upper rim using the Marc Jacobs highlighter and blacker and my lower waterline using the Marc Jacobs highlighter in the shade Earthquake. I also used the shade extreme black on my upper lash line to line my lashes. Uh, I did smoke out the lower lash line with the shade deep shade all along the bottom and I used the black just on the outer corner and very very close to my lash line. I didn't use a damp brush but I did want to mention that if you dampen your brush you can get a lot of color intensity with that. I then applied some top and bottom lash mascara. I did get a tiny bit of fallout while applying the shadow as you can see but I brushed it off and it came off fairly easily but you can always do your eyes first and avoid that issue altogether. So now that we have the look out of the way and you can see how the shades apply, there's a couple of things about the Pat McGrath palette that are not my favorite. The first being that the shade names are not on the palette itself. With the attention to detail that they gave to this beautiful beautiful packaging, I think that that would have been a nice feature. This card I'm going to hold on to it but I don't necessarily like to hold on to extra packaging I would just like to have the eyeshadow palette and that's it and so I think that we really would have benefited from having the names on the palette itself the palette is beautifully constructed but it is really really heavy and despite the fact that you have that beautiful mirror I started doing my eyeshadow look using the palette but my hand got tired right away and I stopped and I switched to a smaller mirror so it's beautiful although I can't say it's the most practical uh, but if it were on a tabletop it would be really really nice and the mirror is beautiful quality it's beveled and it's just gorgeous if you could see here I could see my entire eyes and it's a lovely mirror it's just a heavy palette my other complaint actually is when I was choosing the palettes I chose this one because I found it to be the most diverse and the one that I thought would add the most versatility to my existing eyeshadow collection. They did have an option on the Pat McGrath website to purchase all three palettes and you could get it for $300 which would have been a discount of $75 if you purchased it that way which is significant so I can see why a lot of people purchased it that way but then there were so many shades that were were repeated not so many but out of 10 if one or two are repeated then that's a little bit disappointing for example the shade extreme black comes in all three palettes and so that's just something to look out for if you are interested in purchasing the bundle another thing I noticed is that this shade right here this is astral ghost orchid this one also comes in the sublime palette which is the mothership 2 so since 2 and 3 were my favorite I would already have two repeated shades and so so one of them would become an 8 pan palette for $125 so that's quite expensive and I didn't like that I just personally think that's something really important to mention if you're coming out with three different eyeshadow palettes and selling them as a bundle I really think that all 30 shades should have been unique but that's just me so now on to the question that everybody's asking me between the two the price difference between these two palettes is four dollars this one is 125 and this one is 129 this one might be out of stock uh, no I think I've seen it on Beautylish I think for four dollars more you can have a more complete palette with your transitions as well as your multiple finishes as you can see here so if you are in a treating yourself mood and you were trying to pick between these two my recommendation would be for the Natasha Denona despite the fact well the packaging wise Pat McGrath is like 
This is the most beautiful packaging I own by far. It's incredible. But I think that from a more practical aspect, especially given how much money you're investing, I think Natasha Denona is going to be a little bit better of an investment. Her shadows are beautiful and there's just a lot more to work with here. So that's just my personal opinion. I love them both. The quality is impeccable on both. I'm keeping them both. I mentioned I bought another Pat McGrath palette just yesterday and it's on its way to my house any day and I'm so excited but if you're choosing I would have to say go with the Natasha Denona because it's just as beautiful and a little bit more practical but if you invest I don't think you would be disappointed with either they're both so so beautiful and I do recommend them although these are definitely luxury makeup items I mean it is what it is they're pricey pricey items I just wanted to come on here and give my opinion on the two palettes uh, because I do own them and if that helps you make a purchasing decision then I'm very happy I made this video if you did enjoy my video and my demo on the palette then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are and I will see you very very soon on my next video bye bye